It's oh, oh we're alive. It Yay. says live. Okay, we're cool. Live. Yay, welcome to everybody. Okay, whoever might be watching, this is well, we're on the Arcane Library's YouTube channel. And mm -hmm. I'm Kelsey Dion, and I am interviewing someone really special today. So and introduce yourself. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Jeff Ellis. I am the writer of The Bright Forge of Faldner. It's a kind of, I would say, a mini dungeon. It's pretty short. You can run it between an hour, two hours. Um, pretty combat-centric, sort of just get in, get out kind of affair. Um, yeah, and we're going to talk about that today and kind of my process for it, what's coming up next. And I am going to ask Kelsey some questions about her stuff as well. So it's not just me centric. <laughs> no, I, well, you can, I feel free. You can ask whatever you want, but I'm so curious. <laughs> this is so like, this is a really exciting point in your writing Jeff, because the, the special thing, one of the special things is that you just published your first adventure. Mm -hmm. Um, and we we're kind of talking about this. I think a lot of people want to get to the point where you are, where they did it and like they yeah. put their work out there. It's on the DMs Guild, which by the way, mm -hmm. it's on the DMs Guild. It's a dollar. So if you don't get it, I don't know why <laughs> you wouldn't get it. It's a dollar and it's really good. Um, so that's you're past that kind of scary precipice that most people just yeah. stand at forever. So I, I guess um well, maybe maybe to start, we were kind of talking a little bit before we clicked the broadcast button. Mm -hmm. Um that you were trying to impart me some wisdom cut out and if that happens <laughs> yeah, during yeah, the broadcast yeah. I'm so sorry I know we'll yeah just for, roll some, through it. <laughs> for a little a little uh backdrop I tried to tell Kelsey this I think like three times and it cut out literally every time um but what I was trying to say actually was just that um in DMing and in uh you know writing you kind of have to be willing to just suck like to be okay with it you know and I think that's true of really like any um, kind of any creative endeavor and even things beyond that. Um, if you don't put it out there, it's never going to exist and you're never going to make something that's perfect. So you just got to put it out there at some point, you know. That is such a good I, that's been, I think other writers I've worked with. Um, mm -hmm. I think people would be so surprised when how uncertain writers are of their own work yeah. and how imperfect they think it is, um, even yeah. when they're going to click publish. You know, like from the second I put something up, I'm still looking through it being like, oh, could there be a typo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, could I have send this, said this better? Could the combat? So so to that point, how did you how did you get through acknowledging that maybe this what I put out there won't be like flawless perfection, but yeah. it is certainly high enough quality to publish. Like, how did you get through that? Um, Playtesting, oh, hello. Um, Playtesting, <laughs> you're all good. Uh, Playtesting helped a lot, like just having other people read it and not be like, I don't know, turned to stone by reading it. Like, it's like, okay, so this isn't like the worst thing that could ever be, you know? Um, and a, a lot of it also is kind of having to take a deep breath and just sort of adopt this, this like tear off the band-aid kind of mentality, you know, like for me, especially like, I know that I can publish the most amazing thing in the world or the worst thing in the world, and I'm still going to be anxious about it. So I may as well just do it, you know? Like I may as well just get it out there, whatever it's gonna be. That is so zen. That is, do you ever publish something you care about and not feel nervous? Like you should right. feel nervous, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's inevitable. So I guess being afraid of being nervous would be something that could prevent people from writing, yeah. but it just means you care, you know? Absolutely, it just means yeah. You care. But that's okay. So that's, and then, I mean, I guess we jumped ahead a bit because with like how you even got down the road of sure. writing adventures, I know we were talking and you said that you've been DMing for 
for four years already, which to me means you have a black belt. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how long it takes to get a black belt so yeah right yeah, yeah and so I, you started but have you been playing longer than that or have you been um no out? the dming was the first thing i ever did uh well i guess wow. that's that's i guess that's not like 100 percent true um i started for the very first time i played like two sessions of a 3.5 game when i was mm-hmm. I think just out of high school. Um, And that was awesome. The people that I uh, played with, it was a bunch of my close friends. And then a friend of a friend whose dad DM'd for us. And he was like this like old hand at it. You know, he didn't need to like look at any books or anything. You know, he had been doing this (laughs) since, since he would, well, probably not since he was a kid, but you know, for a long time, for probably as long as the game's been out. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he walked us through all of it and it was just so much fun. Um, and then like all D and D games, unfortunately, it just kind of was like, oh yeah, can we do this again? Oh no, maybe next week. And then eventually it all just, you know, we didn't play it anymore, which is unfortunately how it goes for a lot of people. Yeah. All campaigns must end at some point. Yeah, exactly. But, um, my first, my first real game, uh, I was, it's so funny to like having spent so much time on this now and invested so much time in like ridiculous things like theory and, you know, like just getting way too into it. Um, I really, I started in just like the worst possible way. I was just like, all right, so I barely understand the rules. I'm going to make my own whole entire world. I'm going to just like, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna homebrew everything. It's gonna be crazy, like, oh my gosh. And so I get my friends together. None of us have played D&D um, in, any, in any seriousness. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be the DM, let's do this. And I've made this adventure where they like start out in prison, classic like trope, um, and this little, well, not little kid, but this young dwarf kid bails them out and is like, hey, like the the magistrate or whatever stole my or kidnapped my my brother. Can you help me? And they're like, <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Whatever, I guess. And I'm like, cool, guys, thanks. Um, and so they they get out of the prison cell and the kid like rushes off to like toward to go, you know, thwart the magister. And they all are like, so what's in here? And I'm like, well, there's like the big door leaving the castle. And they're like, oh, cool. So we leave. And I'm just like, what, what's up? (laughs) Like, and like, oh yeah, no, like, I don't know this kid, anything like peace out. And I'm just like, what's going on? Um, And like in, in the course of like 10 minutes, they just like completely derailed the entire campaign that I had set up. And it was such a, it was such a good lesson. Like, honestly, for your first DM session, like, oh yeah, so maybe like, don't spend like, you know, 20 hours preparing all of this stuff because your players are just gonna go out the door and leave, like, you know. Oh, it's so true. That is so brutal. The first time you've been (laughs) down, they're just like, oh, you planned something? Yeah, right? (laughs) Well, we'll just say goodbye to that. You know, it's so funny. Oh my God. It was, and like, I knew like, I knew they were all more or less kind of like um they were all jerks you know so i was like okay well i'll i'll have like the quest giver be like a little kid they're not gonna just oh no are you back hello oh it's catching up it's catching up sorry internet gremlins (laughs) no worries you're all good um but i was just talking about like I specifically chose like a little kid for the quest giver because I was like, you're all jerks, but you're not gonna abandon this child, right? And then I was like, no, 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 we're we're gonna dip. Like, we'll see you later. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, was... You know? Oh. Um, yeah. So after that, that is... I <laughs> I was like, let's do published stuff from now on, because oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man, that's that's kind of a skip. That's a scary lesson i guess and then yeah i can see that i can see that making someone want to be like i just don't know if i want to run my own stuff for the first short while here like yeah 
Yeah, I. And that's, how, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. This is a great list. And then we went on to do um, uh, Curse of Strahd after that. So that was a lot of fun. So I love Curse of Strahd. It's I so really good. do. It's it's so good. So good. And it's I don't know. Um, I, I I that might be my favorite. I don't know. I don't know. I always yeah. am torn, but that might be my favorite, like Watsy, like five E adventure. Um, yeah, I I like um, as far as like being an actual like a player. The most time I've spent uh, was in uh, Storm King, mm -hmm. um, which was which was pretty cool. Um, I liked I liked a lot of the. Um, I love giants in general, like. I think I think uh, D and D giants are are pretty cool, but also just like I don't know. I love that like sense of scale. I love like when I was so this will be <laughs> this is an appropriately nerdy uh, anecdote. But when I was a little kid, um, we would drive everywhere. We lived in Southern California, so like you literally just have to drive wherever you're going, um, and. Uh, Anytime I was like just sitting, looking out the uh, window or whatever, like I would always be like, man, what if like this whole mountain just like rose up and was like a big dragon and like, whoa. And like, you know, I would just like entertain myself with like stupid stuff like that. And uh, I think that's kind of like carried through. Like I still, you know, I love like uh, the divine beasts in um, Breath of the Wild and like Shadow of the Colossus yes. and stuff like that. Like, I think that's so cool. Dude, I love that. That is everybody's kind of got the the a vibe that they love. And it's yeah. I guess I was just reflecting on this the other day. I love pulpy kind of like chult like adventures for some yeah, reason. Yeah. I just love them. I don't know why, but they're so inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that's important. Like you have to follow your muse. You have to really you should like you gotta grab onto what you love and incorporate it into what you write for sure. And like Yeah, absolutely. Like, Oh, this is <laughs> oh, you cut out a little bit. Oh, I'll give you a second to catch up. Do you know that I am <laughs> my back? Um, talking like it's okay. There you go. <laughs> when you cut out, you fast. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. <laughs> I'm back. Good. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. It like fast forwards. You're talking, but and then it's oh, like weird. Oh, here you are. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Um. But I was gonna, I was gonna ask you because. Oh no, you're gone again. Oh man. Building suspense. It's built. It's like building the suspense for the question. <laughs> Who knows what the um, question? You said be. earlier when I couldn't get the answer because that I wanted so badly. <laughs> um, who knows? But ho hopefully, I'm back. Does it sound like I yeah. am? Yeah. No. Yeah. You are. Sorry. You are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I was, I was just curious, like what brought you back to writing after you kind of had that situation where your players abandoned your, your plans <laughs> the first time you ran it? Um, I, well, so I think, I think like being in love with the game just in general, it was sort of inevitable. Like I've always been a writer. Um, I have two, um, I like published two collections of like flash fiction that I wrote, um, around that same time that I started playing D&D. &D. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I was, I was listening to um, stuff like the Adventure Zone and Dice Camera Action and, and stuff like that. And I, I, I don't know, I always want to create. And so I would, even, even for, um, Strahd and stuff. I would I would do like a little bit of like reskinning and and stuff like that. Um, and so I've just always been drawn to that that aspect of the game. Um, I have like a a minor like a almost negligible history in game design. I was a, a junior level designer for like a year um, when I was nineteen, and um, that <laughs> oh man yeah. I, I thought I had it made in the shade and the good times were never gonna end. But um, but I've always loved that, like that like aspect of it. And the thing that's really cool about D D or really kind of any table uh, tabletop RPG um, 
is that if you if you know the rules, you you really can sort of just start writing an adventure. Like you can just write it down and then it exists, you know? Um, I, I, my, my two biggest passions have always been writing and game design. So it was sort of like an inevitable conclusion, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think it was just kind of like, um, but actually, I guess what really like brought me back into it too is, um, moving moving to california leaving my like main like um gaming group mm -hmm. i didn't get to play D, &D as much so i just started creating D, &D cuz i was just like i i need it <laughs> i got to like i got to do something you know yeah you got to have it in your life you know yeah. it's, it's amazing <laughs> wow so that so that kind of brought you back to it and then you started writing and then I was I was super curious. I, I mean, I've read The Bright Forge of Faulkner several times and it's, it's I think <laughs> awesome. it's really cool. It's, I feel like the story is very um, tightly crafted and um, compelling and it's also, it's cool how kind of it's, it is definitely like a bite-sized adventure where you're gonna be mm. able to do it in a session or two. Um, yeah. Which, which I actually think is harder to write sometimes because sure. there was, there's a famous saying, like, I didn't, I'm sorry, I wrote you a long letter. I didn't have time to write a short one. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> totally. Because cutting down to like what's important is actually really challenging. So um, I was just curious, like, where did you, so where did you get the idea for this? Um, like kind of how did it, how did it start in your mind? Yeah. Um, I actually like, it's so it's so funny because um, you know when you talk to like uh, a, an artist or someone like an illustrator or something like it's very rare that someone is like oh yeah like I you know picked up a how to draw manga book and just never looked back like you know I really it really changed my life like but I, I actually uh, Faulkner started with um, James Hake James Heck. I, I don't actually know how to say his last name. Um, yeah. On uh, on on DDB wrote a uh, an article. Um, I, I wrote down the name of it. What was it? It's um oh Desi designing the dungeon and your your first dungeon or something like that. It has a subtitle. Um, and he goes into how to make a a dungeon on one page using the front and back of it. Um, and he and he also introduced uh, for me for the first time um, the idea of the, the five room dungeon, um, and I I literally like the day that article came out I just sat down and step by step followed what it said in the article, and that that was where the like obviously like the the very rough draft uh, started for Faulkner. I knew, I knew that I wanted dwarves and I knew that I wanted, um, I wanted it to be a kind of, um, I, I really like, especially when, when writing, I really like low fantasy. I like things to be sort of, um, not grounded necessarily in reality. Like I'm not that like, you know, historical fiction person at all, but um, just kind of, I really like a sort of uh, two parts reality, one part fantasy kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, and I had this idea, like, what if you go into these ruins and they're just ruins, you know? I mean, they, we have ruins here on earth and they're they're amazing and interesting um but they're not going to be filled with goblins they're not going to start spewing fire at us you know um mm -hmm. so what if that is what the villain saw and then they sort of just had a like build your own uh dungeon kit with them and that's kind of where where the items, the magical items for Faulkner came from, is like you have something to summon, um, uh, like tier one monster. Well, not tiers as in players, but you have something to summon like a small monster, something to summon a medium monster, and you have something to make a trap. 
and the you know the villain's able to just sort of throw those down uh, behind them as they're as they're entering the dungeon, and it's sort of it was that plus dwarves, and that was kind of it actually. <laughs> Nice. Hey, everything starts like with, I feel like that's where most adventures start is like, you yeah. know, like one or two things that you think are super cool. And then you start to figure out how to make them work together. Yeah. Um, which I, that's such a cool thing to, to when, you know, in thinking on the adventure again, after reading it, mm -hmm. it like, it's so neat that the, the villain did most of the threats in there sort of behind yeah. him, which is cool. Like, it wasn't just like they're lurking and waiting for someone. Like yeah. it's a really interesting take on it. He made them, you know, the bad yeah, guy exactly. kind of made yeah. the whole thing scary. Yeah, awesome. I really that, like that. That's so neat. Yeah, I'm glad that translates because yeah, that was kind of like the the main thing that I wanted to focus on in terms of uh, just like the dungeon design, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. sort of entering a an empty room that's been jur jury rigged to be like a dungeon, you know. Yeah, that is really a cool approach to it. I really like that. And the thought of a villain who's clever enough to make a, a dangerous situation for the people yeah. trying to come after him. So yeah. just, I'm look, actually I have it, you know what? I have it pulled up here oh, right now because I wanted to, yeah, it's like on oh, this, nice. like, oh, you can't see it. <laughs> oh, oh, almost. <laughs> no, that's awesome. But, I've been looking through it like, like all day and yesterday yeah. being like, yeah, this is really cool. Like I really like, and, <laughs> I, I feel like you hit so many of the critical bases. How did you, how did you kind of decide the um, progression of how the players were gonna like go through things? Because I remember mm -hmm. we talked about this um, like a while ago when we first yeah. when we first met. You were sort of talking about like monsters and pacing, and I know that's a lot for people to keep in their heads all at once and try to like yeah. meld together. So like, yeah. how did you kind of approach that? Um, well, in that um, in that same article talking about uh, the five room dungeon, it um, mm -hmm. it has sort of pacing built into it, which is mm -hmm. pretty intuitive. You know, it has um, it has the there's there's five topics. It's like the the entrance, the uh, setback, the puzzle, the boss, and the treasure. I think. So it, it, it tries to make sure that you have all of those. Um, and I knew that I wanted a fight in the entrance, but I didn't want it to be sort of like the main fight. Cool. Um, you. Oh, no. Are you back? For a second. Oh, no. Kelsey. Oh. I see and that's doing 10 minutes <laughs> every get our internet failure. You know? <laughs> okay. It's just it's like, right. oh, it's time. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, you know, it's been a, it's been a while. Let's let's hit them with one. Um, yeah. Things have seemed to yeah. yeah, things, you know, let's let's take a break. No, it um but yeah, so I I knew I wanted a uh, a small fight in the entrance just to have like an engaging um introduction to the dungeon. And then um, mm -hmm. the setback would be another fight. Um, and then I, I kind of just, um, I think I scrapped the puzzle cause I don't actually like puzzles. Um, I'm like, I'm like super like anti puzzle. I'm, I, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm the person who always plays like a barbarian or, someone who's just like that's cool can we smash this now you know it's so like kind of for like for me like i hit this point where i was like well i want to offer everyone something i want them to all be like to find something that they like in the adventure but i don't want to write a puzzle <laughs> so i was like okay it i would rather i would rather have this dungeon maybe not be for that like 10 or 20 percent of people who are like they just gotta have a puzzle then include a really crappy puzzle um so i kind of i kind of cut that that off and and it that in itself i think taking a small design and then trimming it down more like really sort of just like tightened everything up um but i also um i also knew like 
my my main worry, and I got this actually, I got this back from uh, the first person who play tested it, my friend Elliot, um, was that people were just going to be able to just like walk in and out basically, like, and you know, he 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 was like, yeah, we played it in about like fifty minutes. We just sort of everybody just sort of walked in and just knocked everything out and left. And I was like, eh, that was my exact worry, um, but. You know, and at the same time, he kept like, he kept being like, oh, but they got, you know, they got really good roles and they min max their characters and, you know, don't, don't worry too much about it. I was like, oh, no, I, we'll see. So I punched up the fights a little bit after that. But yeah, I just kind of always tried to keep it um, small, really. Gosh, I like that. And I, I really admire the choice to not do a puzzle if you weren't feeling it, you know, because, yeah. Um, I think that's something that makes people maybe not want to go forth with their work. You you have to, I, I sincerely believe you have to love everything you're putting into the adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't love it, then the people playing it are going to not, they're, they're going to kind of sense that you didn't design it with, with real investment yeah. and they're not going to have fun with it then. So, I mean, it's, it's much better to not put in something for the sake of having something you know, it's it's just much mm -hmm. better to just either cut it or replace it with something you really, really love instead. And yeah, exactly. I also yeah. don't love puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I think um, yeah, even in even in like I I don't I don't want to go on a tangent about how much I hate puzzles. That's that's nothing. That's not for anything. <laughs> poor um, puzzles. But I know I see <laughs> poor people puzzles. who like sure them and I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're they're there. You know, it's funny. Yeah. Breath of the Wild, which you mentioned yeah. earlier. Uh -huh. I love Zelda, the whole franchise. Uh -huh. But the the shrines where you have to complete puzzles, I'm just like, nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just oh yeah. That. I'm just like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, no. I I actually I really love um so actually, I um, there's a a web series called um, Game Maker's Toolkit by Mark Brown um, that is specifically about making video games. But I actually applied a ton of stuff that I learned from that series to writing uh, Faulkner. Um, and one of the things that he talks about for his like his sort of Breath of the Wild breakdown is how cool it is that they um, broke up the sort of the usual um, dungeon, like big dungeons that you see in earlier Zeldas into small bite-sized chunks using those shrines. So you have this whole huge open world and then peppered throughout it are all of these like little tiny, you know, bite-sized dungeons. And I thought that was really cool. Um, but in terms, of, in terms of applying stuff like that to uh, Faulkner, one of the things I, I wanted to do that I think I may have I may have backed off on a little too much was um, have a mechanic that you're introduced to in the beginning is complicated in the middle and then can use to your benefit in the end, um, which is something that he kind of uh, talks about with like um, Nintendo design, um, specifically like how how Nintendo designs like their Mario games and stuff. Um, so I had um, I had uh, an ignite mechanic because um, normally in Five E, anytime anything is ignited, it's um, objects or un unworn or uncarried objects or whatever around people. And so I wanted to do spells that are on the weaker side, but that will apply um, ignite to creatures. Um, and so you run into that, if I recall, um, with the burning silhouettes in the beginning, and then you get that with the magma burst scroll, which is like a new spell specifically for that idea. Um, and then uh, you, you, you see it again with the, um, uh, what are they called? The magmen, their uh, death burst when they explode has that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Faulkner himself knows the magma burst spell. Um, so you kind of, you, you see it in a smaller form, then you are able to um, acquire it, but you can't really, 
use it to its full effect because you're fighting a fire creature. Um, mm -hmm. You see it again in a larger effect, and then you fight uh, Balorn, and he actually like is susceptible to it, but he has his own version of it. So you can kind of see how the the spell that you just got can be used. Um, but yeah, so like you know, I I try to pull like a lot of different stuff from different um, design talks, I guess. <laughs> Oh no, you're gone again. Hi everyone. It's just me now. <laughs> I cut okay. out a little bit. I okay, cut out are. at the end a bit, but I, I oh, heard no. everything, I think. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually kind of, I, I've been cracking up every time it comes yeah. out. Cause it's always it's, like right at a juicy moment <laughs> yeah. of like wisdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it knows. It knows um, what it's doing. Yeah, it's just trying to make it hard. It's gamifying this, um, you know, you have to, like, really work to get the, <laughs> the actual details. Yeah. But, I, no, but I, I think I, I, caught what, I caught what you were saying, which is that really sort of, like, introducing a mechanic or, like, mm -hmm. it sort of combines, like, foreshadowing and then, right. like, actionable, like, the players can use this to do cool stuff later. I, I really like that. Mm -hmm. That was clever. Thank you. Very brilliant. And I love Magma Burst. I've never designed, I don't, I've never designed a spell for um, publication before. So the fact that you did that in your first adventure was like yeah. really bold and cool. Thanks. I, that's, and you made new monsters, which is yeah. also bold. I, that was like the one thing I really, like I wanted to make sure that I had one, um, one new monster and one new item and then making making the monster i think i think i think while i was making the monster i came up with the idea for the spell and so i was like okay well i should just like include that um mm -hmm. but i i think like a really cool um a really cool part of the game that i maybe just in my own personal games or listening to like actual play stuff or or whatever seems to get passed up is the ability for wizards to collect spells like scroll like through mm -hmm. finding scrolls and stuff like i think that's so cool and so kind of pivotal to that class um that i think you know it's 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 a good idea for designers to say like okay here's this here's this um new monster and it's cool and it's engaging you know it's really interesting um and maybe the DM can use that in their kit again, like right on, and kind of same thing with items. But if you put a scroll of a new spell you created, you technically you have like a way to say like, hey, you know, wizard character, here's a new way for you to have like a whole new spell that you can, you know, sort of just save to your spell book, provided that, you know, the rogue doesn't get the scroll first and then use it and it blows up or whatever you know like it it D, &D yeah. is what it is but you know that is neat that's yeah that, i really like that because it's um i i, I think that spellcasters in particular it's easy to forget to design for them i yeah. mean i'm guilty of that everyone is in, in adventures where you you, you can key in on those those abilities that specific characters have and when you're thinking yeah. like what would a player want out of this, mm -hmm. you know, like what, what would, what would, what can I give a player that's going to last through maybe m right. multiple campaigns? Because you're giving a lot to the DM when you make a monster and yeah. a villain. You're giving them a lot, mm -hmm. but what about the poor players? Yeah, <laughs> not just experience points. You got to give them something else. So I really yeah. like that. Thank you. Spells are great. I love spellcasters. I always try to play a spellcaster, and then. Mm -hmm. I, I just end up wanting to be a fighter for some yeah. reason. <laughs> I I have like a I don't know. I have a, a terminal case of younger brother. I like when I was when I was a little kid, I was like always obsessed with being like the big strong guy. Like I always wanted to be the fighter and like uh yeah. listening to um to like Dragonlance book on tapes and stuff. Like mm -hmm. I always wanted to be Caramon. Like I was like, yeah, like I wanna, you know, I'm the barbarian and like um but as I got older, I got more like obsessed with imitating my older brother. And so like for the longest time, I was like, no, wizards are cool. I only like wizards just like my brother. 
Um, and like now, like now, as I'm like almost 30, I'm like starting to finally like come back into like, no, nah, I, I kind of just want to like swing a sword and like be a big buff boy. Like, I don't really like, yeah. you know. That's so funny. It's like this, and we're touching on like deep stuff, but I totally went through that too, where I was like, no, like wizards are so cerebral and you have to, yeah. you have to be a spellcaster if you want to gain true power. Yeah. But I mean, all the, I think aside from Mordenkainen, all the famous like old D and D guys were fighters. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, all right? of them were fighters <laughs> and they would yeah. like build kingdoms and raise armies and stuff. So yeah. You're all Conan the Barbarian, you know, and he's I cool. I love Conan. <laughs> I saw a, uh, I saw a, a, a build the other day that was like a barbarian rogue. And people were like talking about like min maxing and stuff that I, I didn't like super care about. But I was like, oh, like a barbarian rogue. Okay, that's cool. It's like super physical. And then I was thinking about it and I was like, that's actually, that's, that's kind of Conan. Like he, wow. you know, he was this like hardcore, like solo dude and he actually had like a bunch of adventures where he like snuck around and had to you know like really like use stealth because you know it's it's conan so the magic's so like intense and crazy whenever you run into it um mm -hmm. but yeah I was, just, I was i was thinking about conan the other day like yeah he's totally like a, a barbarian with like some rogue levels in there he totally is he was like a, a professional thief for a long time oh, yeah so. yeah which I'm, I'm talking like an expert. I've only read and I'm actively reading mm -hmm. like the collection of all Conan works. Um, oh, nice. So, which is really interesting. I, I actually mm -hmm. really love sword and sorcery is like my favorite genre ever. So yeah. um, it's totally perfect, but that's, that's gotten, I've been thinking more and more like, wow, you can see how this writing mm -hmm. were, like is in D and D like how this yeah. became D and D. Oh, um, totally. Fighters are cool. They they're kings yeah. and they lead kingdoms. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, no. Wizards are for nerds. So whatever. <laughs> we can all you know we can be wizards. You could be a yeah. sorcerer, which is like the barbaric wizard. You know. So totally. I actually that's so funny. My first uh, my first character um, in that uh, three point five game we were talking about. My first character was um, a sorcerer, but like thematically he was a barbarian. So he was like this like human human kid from like a, a tribe um, out on the grasslands who just like had no idea why he could throw fireballs and stuff. <laughs> like he was like, I don't understand. Yeah. And like for your first game where it's everyone's first game, like, I don't know, the heavy the heavy narrative stuff like that gets on everyone's nerves because like I was like, no, I'm I'm. He thinks he's a barbarian, so he's just gonna keep attacking with his spear. And they're just like, "We need you to throw a fireball, like please, for the <laughs> love of God!" Yeah. Yeah, I can. I don't know. I have these spell slots. I'm not he aware of yeah. that. <laughs> you guys need to let him know he has spells, because right now he just. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that. That's the players like. I do. I do love when players kind of nerf themselves because their character yeah. has a really good reason. I, I am always like, as a DM, I'm like, yes, yeah. you are afraid of goblins. And you <laughs> yeah, run exactly. far away from those goblins. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Oh my God. Um, but that's, it's funny that you said like, I, I, I was gonna bring this up about your adventure that I think it's very like tightly written. Mm -hmm. And my, I am of the school of thought where I feel like having a huge amount of text to like read verbatim to players is really hard. Like, like yeah. players disengage from that in my experience. Mm -hmm. um, and you wrote this very tight. Like there's not like a read this box. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, it's got a lot of like, here's kind of what there is. And then mm -hmm. it, it, it quickly lets the DM sort of use that. So mm -hmm. um, was that kind of tricky though? I always find that it's hard I... to write that way. So this is actually, this is hilarious not to get too like a or, or, or insular with the interview, but I, I totally got that from your adventures, like 100%, oh, no. <laughs> like I 100% just like stole that from you. Um, no, you didn't <laughs> steal it. I didn't come up with it or anything. Yeah, sure. But, I, uh, but no, I, I had just read um, Crypts of Azarum. You had just released that oh. one and I had just read it. 
and I was like thinking about that and and the sort of um, like not even well yeah like specific specifically that kind of like um, uh, punctuated like bolded list that you use which I I really appreciate when I'm running games um, but also just like even just the idea of as a writer being able to kind of change the format of how it's written and how it's presented. Um, before that, I had been like, okay, well, I'm gonna read all the Watsi books and I'm just gonna try to make my own Watsi like adventure and I'm gonna do it exactly how they do it and then nothing can go wrong. Um, and then, you know, I read I read Crips and I was like, this is its own thing. Like, this is completely different. Like, what? Um, and it was so like, um, uh, it was so much easier to run and to to improvise um, and stuff. So I, I really set out to make sure that all of my writing was super um, super concise, and like I, especially because um, with my background in in flash fiction specifically, like a lot of um, a lot of fl flash fiction is similar to. Um, in 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 my opinion, similar to like good dungeon writing, where um, you want to evoke things in the mind of like the reader and the players without like hammering home like exactly what it is, mm -hmm. um, because it's always going to change and it's always going to be different. And you are like as a dungeon writer, you are. Um, or adventure writer, I don't know, whatever. Um, you are, uh, you're kind of playing like a game of telephone on the way to the players. So mm -hmm. the DM is reading your stuff, interpreting it how they're gonna interpret it, and then presenting it to the players, and the players are hearing that, and they're gonna interpret it how they interpret it. And mm -hmm. like with writing um, flash fiction, um, one thing I, I kind of realized when I when I read a book, the there can be three paragraphs on what the main character looks like. But for the entirety of that book, they just look like however they looked when I first pictured them from like the first sentence. So, you know, like it's it's um, you know, how much how much time do you want to spend writing something that not a lot of people are actually going to like hold in their memories, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's so true. I think you're spot on there that, that every person who's participating in a story is going to have a little bit of a different like image in their head yeah. of how things look. Um, like, I think, I think a, like you could say like, there's, um there's like a, a red striped shirt on that yeah. person and everyone's going to imagine in that shirt a little bit differently exactly and if you were to go into like granular detail <laughs> yeah um like the the stripes are exactly well not hard to point <laughs> you know, yeah. there's no enough of, and that's and that's you put you put them there and exactly. so that's what they need that's they don't need more than that yeah i another so, like i'm another big i'm just like, looking at your adventure Oh, no worries. Everyone, for newcomers, you can't see it because my screen is blued big, out. But it's a big, bright screen. The bright I screen. I can't. Let me see there. if I can. I mean, it's, well, the forge is very bright. Okay, it's <laughs> yeah, very right, bright. So, you know, <laughs> the bright forge of Falder. But that's what we're talking about. If there's any newcomers, maybe we should give people a quick recap. Um, we're talking about. Well, this is Jeff Ellis, and this is his first published adventure called The Bright Forge of Faulkner. And I was so impressed by it that I wanted to bring him on here to talk about like how he wrote it and what his approach was. And I think, I think Jeff, that you're kind of a part of like a new age of writers who are okay with rejecting like the Watsi format and kind of mm -hmm. presenting it in your own way. And yeah. I'm so flattered that you said that Crypts of Azurum inspired some of your presentation, but this this is by no means like a rile. This is very much your own. Thank and you. I think it's really effective. And I, I want people to, to see it because this is the kind of adventure that's easy to DM at right. the table. Yeah. And I can tell that you wrote it with as a DM. Like you you have enough mm -hmm. experience 
experience being a D and going about this, you're like, what would I need? Oh, you're, you're I mean, I'm sensing that from your writing. <laughs> well, um, yeah, no, I, I, I kind of, I don't know. I don't know that I do it necessarily like consciously. Like I never like mm -hmm. stop and set aside time for it or anything, but I definitely, um, think through each step as a DM and like what I need to know while I'm running it and what I spend a lot of time thinking about like what I don't want to say or what I, what I want to not say, I guess, like what I want to leave out. Mm -hmm. Um, because I want there to be things that you fill in, um, because there's, if you have two people separate from each other running the same adventure, it kind of shouldn't be the same adventure, you know, like it, it should both, mm -hmm. both should have their own different thing because the DM should be bringing a lot of their own character into it, you know, um, and, um, not to put pressure on DMs. I mean, you know, if you want to, if you want to run it as as directly by the book as you can, that's that's your own style. Go for it. Um, but as as a writer, I want to make that available for people. And I think I think coming into dungeon writing as um, a fan of like the Adventure Zone was a big deal because mm -hmm. the the fan art for the adventure zone has always been so inspiring to me because there are so many like different versions of like Magnus and Merle and Taco like you know everyone kind of like draws them their own way and I think that's such a cool thing for like fan art of an adventure game you know like for for everyone to be imagined like in their own different way it, it shows kind of what we're talking about a little bit like um everyone's gonna picture them different you know um i um origin originally i um i wrote i wrote it with um much more like vague descriptions um mm -hmm. Like I didn't nail down like a, a, a first name for Baylorn. Like I was like, oh, I'll just use like their family name. And I didn't give, I didn't give him like a gender or anything. Like I wanted him to just be um, completely open. And that it got difficult to write. And it also um, got difficult to hold this person as a solid character in my mind by having them be like that vague. Like I went I went a little like too far um, in that direction. And then also, you know, had to remind myself that um, there is, you know, DMs also like mod their content how they want, you know? And if, um, you know, a DM's like, I, I would rather, you know, Baylorn be called this and I'd rather Baylorn be like a non-binary dwarf or a, you know, a female dwarf or whatever then that's totally chill. Like, go for it. Like when I, you know, I support that 100%. Um, but in the writing, it was just kind of getting lost and like muddled. Um, so I, I, you know, I had to, I had to kind of like uh, lean back in the other direction a little bit for that. Yeah, that's, but that's really a good, I feel like that's a cool discovery to make too when you're first writing, mm -hmm. like what, what are the limits of how I can present this? Yeah. And, I think it's if you don't try to find those limits and then I mean I think that there's it's important to try to hit them. Yeah. Because then you know how to reel it in a little bit <laughs> yeah, and you're totally. still achieving as close to what you want as you can. You know. So I that's I'm glad that I'm glad that you made that discovery while writing and then found what was going to work best for your style. It would be hard to write. I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine writing an adventure where the main villain is so um open-ended that it's almost like yeah. you can't that would be very challenging that would be yeah. really hard <laughs> i was i yeah i think like i definitely don't don't think that it's impossible by any means but it was kind of just i was already asking like too much of myself and i was just like i'm, I'm gonna simple this i'm gonna simplify this just a little bit like <laughs> but but you're so right that the dm has the power to change that and then yeah so it's, so it's almost a fight not worth fighting in that regard because you know yeah. the DM could, could handily change something and it wouldn't be any problem to the story. 
you know, as long as it wouldn't be a problem to the story. So that's, that's, that's cool. I like that. So what is, okay. Oh no. Okay. What are it? Oh, did oh, I cut out? Hold on. Okay. I think you're back. Am I back? Is it? Oh. Yes. You are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I was curious what from this adventure, what was your favorite scene? Mm -hmm. And what was your favorite scene to write, which might not be the same? Or <laughs> I think, um, <laughs> I think for me, um, I actually really loved kind of, um, I do, I, I like the entrance. Um, mm -hmm. I actually myself have not had a ton of success running the entrance, but I also, I don't know, the, the group I'm playing with right now, they, I don't know, they use, they use very neutral characters. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. like, like, oh, we aren't, we aren't really going to make a decision about this. So I kind of have to, I don't know, shoehorn it a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. I, I having, I think finding like finding out who Hortense was and like having her just sort of come across the, the players um, sort of randomly almost rather than like meeting them in a tavern. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really liked that. And I, I just liked the idea that the story like hinges on this dwarf who is the the one thing I, I said to my players when I ran it, I was like, she is going to run back to the Citadel to tell everyone about this. And she is not in a state to survive doing that. Like she's not going to get there. She's gonna like, she is not gonna, she's not in a, in any place to like survive this hike, this like massive like miles run uh, to the Citadel, but she's gonna keep going until she falls. Like she, you know, she has done something horrible by leading Baylorn here um, under the like pretense that he was gonna like start this revolution um, for, mm -hmm. the for the purposes of like bringing, um, the disenfranchised up as opposed to his real purpose, which is like just straight up revenge. She just wants to like torch everything. Um, mm. And so she has this kind of like redemption arc that you can, you can um, buy into or not. Um, so I really like that scene. It, it sets the, um, I feel like it sets the pace of the adventure. Um, I actually, that was, so that was like another, actually a huge thing for inspiration for this one was realizing that there is a time limit on or not not necessarily a time limit but that it takes a specific amount of time to attune to a magical item and i was ah. like oh, okay so like what if you have an adventure where there's like a villain who isn't that powerful necessarily but who is like actively attuning to an item right now and if they mm -hmm. finish like it's going to be bad um so so i i really I liked that scene. I liked the way it set the pace. Um, but I think I think my favorite like writing is probably for the um, the giant like obsidian hand that's like offering the the fire heart. Um, I I I love playing with like scale like that, and um, it's sort of like it came about like so naturally, and that's always so fun um, as a writer where you're like you write something and you're like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Do I like that? And then you're like, that, yeah, that's how it is. Like, that's just how it's going to be, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of having like this stone made by giants, but that is like so tiny that it's like just like a little pebble on their finger to them. And then I was like, well, how am I gonna, they're not going to see the giant, you know? And so mm -hmm. I was like, well, what if the altar is like sort of just devoted to this, this imagery of the fire giants, like passing it along. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I really liked that um, setting, I guess. Did, did that detail, so that kind of came out as realized, oh, the fire heart's gonna be really small compared to made it. Was that like organic? Yeah, that sort of just like, I was like writing and I was like, well, I want this like giant hand coming down. It's gonna be like all epic looking. And then I was like, but, they're not, the fire heart isn't like the size of this like giant orb, you know? And so like, I pictured it just like a, almost like an eyelash, like on the tip of the finger. And I was like, 
that seems silly. And then I was thinking about it and I was like, but sometimes like, I don't know, real things are, are silly. And also that kind of like epic sense of scale can be so like engrossing, you know, I, I just, yeah, I really, I, I decided rather than like, I feel like I actively chose rather than like hating it or changing it. I like chose to like it. And I think that was, I don't know, that made it more important to me. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, I'm so glad you kept that detail. Cause that to me was one of the most memorable images. Like I'll never forget yeah. like that, that will stick with me. Even now you're talking about it. I can remember the exact image I thought of yeah. because it's so unique and, and it kind of makes sense in a way. Like it's sure. Yeah it's believable. I just thought it was really cool. Awesome. I'm <laughs> I liked it a lot. Nice. Yeah. And I think that goes to show that, you know, A, when you like your subject matter and you're writing what you really like, I think mm -hmm. that there are a lot of moments while you're writing that you'll get this organic cool idea where you're like, wow, I didn't plan for that, but that's so cool. I have to yeah. include it, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I think, I think, um, uh, writing writing scenes to fit uh magical items like that is really fun um and then um i love writing like adventure hooks and adventure leads like uh for future adventures that's like i think that's actually honestly my favorite thing to write like yeah. these little like vague like tiny background quests that you like may or may mm -hmm. not use at all i don't know i just i i love them so much because they they leave so much like to the imagination and like with the with the greater adventure like mm -hmm. as as much as we can talk about like leaving things open you do need to nail some things down you know but with with adventure hooks and and leads and stuff you can you can kind of write an entire adventure just with like two sentences you know like just kind of like and then leave it for everyone else to figure mm -hmm. out <laughs> I love that. I totally agree. And then it's yeah. it's fun too because you're you're like, yeah, you're you're basically just freely giving ideas in that moment, and you could turn yeah. any one of those into a full adventure because that's exactly. how they start. I mean, every adventure starts as like a one second, like, wouldn't it be cool if like, <laughs> you know, this, and that it's it's yeah. really just a pure idea. Exactly. So, there we go. Oh my gosh, we, we're already at an hour. I, I can't believe oh, that went by so fast. <laughs> nice, <laughs> yeah. Damn <laughs> um, will, will, you, will you give us a little bit about where, you know, tell us one more time about Bright Forge and then where we can find your work and where we can mm -hmm. keep track of what you're up to because I'm sure hoping this is published. I heard you were working on something. Yeah, um, so um, again, my name is Jeff Ellis. Uh, I just published my first adventure called The Bright Forge of Faldner that you can buy on the DMs Guild at dmsguild.com uh, for a buck. And um, I hope you do. It's, I really actually, I really care about it. I really like it. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. So I hopefully, hopefully you will like it too. You can find me, oh, I have to check the specifics on this. <laughs> I have to like, I have like two different but very similar handles that I use based on whether or not I can actually get one or the other uh, for uh -huh. all my social media. Um, so you can you can find me uh, on Twitter uh, at Hit Points Max, and then you can find me on Instagram at Max Hit Points. So that's a fun little turnaround. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then. For future adventures and stuff, um, every Thursday on Twitter or Instagram, uh, I post um, a new magic item based on the uh, major arcana of the tarot. Right now we have 11 items, I think. So Thursday will be our 12th. Um, so check that out. They're completely free. Um, yeah, I, I would love for people to incorporate them in their campaigns or just to, uh, you know, follow along. And then in terms of adventures, I'm working on um, kind of a monster hunt right now inspired by um, the game Breath of Fire 3 for the PlayStation, which uh, 
Breath of Fire was the first video game I, well, not the first video game I ever played, but the first one I ever beat like on my own. Um, so it has like a huge place in my heart. Um, the third one has what I think is the first scene in a video game that really made me like emotional and like think about, think about things. Um, the characters wind up having to uh, hunt down this monster um, that's gone insane and they find they find it and they fight it and it gets away and then they track it to a cave and they they fight it there and it dies kind of like blocking a doorway and behind it they find its nest and uh they find it's like the bodies of its babies that had uh died and it's just been like it's insane and thinks that they're still alive so it has just been bringing them food and none of the food's getting eaten uh and obviously the babies aren't getting better so it just keeps bringing food and it's essentially like over hunting the area um so there's like no game left and people are starving and that's kind of like the hook to try to like resolve this um so i built out that monster in D, D 5e stats um and i'm making like a a similar um, adventure around this idea of uh, scarcity and starvation and kind of, um, I don't know, I, I, I guess like the ethics in monster hunts because I I don't know, I'm a jerk and I'm like, man, I, I love monster hunts and I totally like, I love that idea, like go get the dragon. And then at the same time, I'm like, man, that dragon's probably got kids, dude. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, so I, true. Guess, I guess wrestling with that, that idea of like monster hunting is fun, but also like technically if you go around battling Pokemon, you're promoting animal abuse. Like, you know, like, what are you doing? You know? Oh God, where does it end? <laughs> <laughs> so true oh yeah. man so that's your next adventure you're working on yeah. um wow that's gonna be cool i really want to see that that is that that sounds like it's gonna be pretty deep and it's 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 a cool concept it's thank you i want to see it when it's ready <laughs> and and i know you're also i know you're you're working on a couple of projects i'm not sure if you're allowed, allowed to talk about them but oh, people yeah. should i don't know if you are I'm uh, yeah. There's I don't think there's any NDA, but I'm gonna be um, uh, writing up a lesson for Ashley Warren's uh, RPG Writers Workshop. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think uh, uh, submissions? No, not submissions. I don't know. I think signups are already over, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm writing a. Uh, a lesson on how to build memorable N uh, NPCs for one shots. So basically, how to incorporate um, meaningful and memorable characters into small spaces. Awesome. Well, you can also get a good example of that by reading your adventure. So yeah, hey, there you go. <laughs> it's very much worth checking out. So awesome. All right, Jeff. Well, thanks so much for coming on. It was really delightful to talk to you and to get your perspective and to hear yeah. all the stuff you're working on. And thank you for having and, me. I really appreciate it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Hopefully, we can do this again. Maybe like next time you publish something, we'll we'll talk about that one too. And um, I I want I want to talk in general on this channel more about writing and how people go about it. And you are mm -hmm. our inaugural expert, so thank you <laughs> awesome. for doing that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you guys, we'll we'll catch you all later. Thanks for watching. And Jeff, keep us in the loop about what you're up to, okay? Awesome. We'll do. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.